Father, thank you for a beautiful morning. Thank you for showering your presence over us this morning. We realize that this is a significant moment in our lives that we get to spend special time with you. For some of us, you have shown yourself faithful in extremely difficult times, Father. For some of us standing before you this morning, you have shown yourself a gracious God by giving us another opportunity to engage with you, Father. For some of us that has just been here the whole time, you have shown us that we still matter. So we lay our hearts before you this morning and we want to say thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Father. We might not understand everything. Sometimes we might feel insecure. Sometimes we might feel anxious. But we know one thing for sure, that this morning we have shown up to seek your kingdom irrespective of those feelings, Father. We have shown up irrespective of our concerns because we are doing everything in our power, any, everything in our ability to show you that we are dependent on you this morning. May you show yourself faithful in this morning by anointing my lips, Father, by anointing the words that I speak this morning so that it will be words of power and authority, and I'm not even scared to declare that I need your anointing to rest upon me. Otherwise, this is just going to be a speech. We need your anointing to rest upon us, Father, this morning. We have declared that this is holy ground that we stand on, Father. Yes, it's normal brick, Father. It's normal cement, but what it represents is our relationship with you, Father. You hold all authority, all power, and we submit our hearts before you in this morning. We pray that in the wonderful name of your Son, and together as a community, we say, amen. amen and Amen. You guys are welcome to take your seats in this beautiful atmosphere. We are so glad to have you guys here with us this morning. I was just reminded again as we were worshiping and preparing for this morning, sometimes we rush through so quickly that we, we forget to stop and take a pause and appreciate what's happening this morning. What I mean by saying appreciate what's happening this morning, I want you to understand that we have an opportunity to gather together as a faith community, to see each other once more, and together bring honor and glory unto God. Now, we have been so spoiled that this is so common for us that we don't realize that this morning, it is a very special gathering this morning. What a special opportunity. And I hope, I hope, and I'm, I'm not saying this just because... I'm waiting for them to prepare this stuff. I really mean what I'm saying. I hope that you appreciate the person seated next to you this morning. I hope that you are thankful for the one or two or three that have shown up with you this morning to honor God. It's a special moment to have your friends, your family surrounded by you as we honor God. Are you guys ready for the message this morning? We are off with part five. Hopefully, this is the final part of my series. I'm feeling a little bit emotional this morning because I like to talk, and we would just feel like we were just warming up, but we kind of need to land somewhere, okay? So, this morning, we're going to touch on practical steps for a healthy church rhythm. But because we all forgot the last five weeks, we need to do the recap. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 you better go fast for the Okay. So the series started with part one, and we discussed. Uh, okay, so, so I tried this two weeks ago, it didn't work. I tried it last week, didn't go. So I kind of made copies of the answers for you guys, okay? I mean, we're not going to take up another offering for this. This is, I mean, just being, you know, we are generous in God's kingdom. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you again. For part one, we did the. <laughs> okay, you 
guys need some new glasses. The answer is right there. How the pandemic changed our habits. So we were talking about this cultural influence that we're living in and our challenges, real challenges affected our church rhythm. Okay. And we kind of got into the habit of not coming to church because of all these reasons that I listed, which I remember, but you guys forgot. Okay. Part number two that we spoke about the messy truth about the church. And you guys love this one. You can remember? This is the one where I told you guys how bad I am and how good you guys are. Okay. Can you guys remember? I mean, if there's one sermon you probably remember, it's this one. Okay. We talked about the moral failures of leaders and how churches don't make it about God anymore. Okay. And then at part three, nobody came to church because I... <laughs> Because I was telling you what you guys were doing wrong. And there was nobody here, okay? But I recorded it and I sent it to your mailboxes. And on the statistics, nobody watched it in any case, okay? But the point being is, I wanted to, to, to just be honest and tell you what you guys have been doing wrong when it comes to church. And remember how we spoke about how we deliberately not choose God. It's not that we don't believe. It's not that we don't feel Him work. It's not that we don't pray when we are in need. It's that we deliberately not choose God in our process. And step number four um, was last week, the solutions for the road moving forward. And just to give you a quick recap within 60 seconds, we quickly spoke, says here, come on, move this off. Defining the church according to culture, okay, our modern culture. And when we say the word church, we spoke about that church is a building, okay? We spoke about that last week. But when we look at the Volgende Inner, when it comes to defining the church according to the Bible, we quickly realized that the church is recognized as the bride of Christ. And then when we understand that if we are not happy with the church, we are kind of unhappy with ourselves because church is not something that you attend. Some church is something we are. And so we spoke about that we need to be the blessing. If we are not happy with the condition of church, we need to be that blessing. And I gave you this beautiful, I mean, this, nobody tweeted this, but you can if you want to, okay? You can just hashtag favorite pastor john just there at the bottom but we need to be the church that we want to attend it's not going to happen for you it's not going to happen for you it's something that we need to do and then probably one of the most significant um eye openers that i had in my personal life was this idea of feeling versus knowledge and how sometimes we know one thing but we feel something else we know we need to pursue our relationship with god but we don't always feel like it we know we have been called to make a difference, but we don't always feel like making a difference. And so we spoke about that whole idea. That was the fastest recap of four weeks I ever did in my life. So this morning, we are going to sp speak about part five, practical steps to, for a healthy church rhythm. And I just want to give a shout out to my daughter. She's doing the computer this morning. Oh, yes. Uh, Nene is doing a very, very good job. We fired Brian and we... Uh <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I'm just teasing. All right. Now, if there's one thing I know we all like, we all like, every single one of us, and no, it's not the black licorice. That's, we don't eat those things here. Okay, we eat all the other licorice, not the, the black licorice. But the thing is that if there's one thing I know about all of us is that we like to get the most value for our money. You guys know what I'm talking about. You don't eat tomato sauce at your home, okay? But the moment you go eat somewhere else, you ask for tomato sauce, you ask for Tabasco sauce. Man, you at Wimpy, you even ask for the Spurs sauce as well by the Wimpy, okay? Because you are going to get value for your money. You ask for extra straws, okay? And you ask for extra serviettes as well, okay? Because you will get your extra value of money. Am I lying, okay? We, we like to get the value of our money so much that when you go over and you sleep by a guest house, you don't use all the shampoos in that bottle, ladies and gentlemen. But you take it home in any case, okay? You don't even like the shampoo. that the, It doesn't even smell nice. But you make sure you, you even take the shower cap home, okay? Even the shower cap. Most value... <laughs> Are you guys feeling guilty this morning? <laughs> Maybe I'm feeling guilty because I just came from Durban a couple of weeks. <laughs> and you, you get the most, the most value. So what I want to do this morning, I want to have a discussion. And you guys didn't start my timer, by the way. Um, to get the most value out of church attendance. 
I want you to get the most value, the most value. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to make attending this gathering valuable to your life. Okay. The best tips that you're ever going to hear. Ever. Yes. Okay. One of the best decisions you can make in your life. One of the best decisions you can make. The best. Is to attend church. Okay. One of the best decisions that you make in life. But just to be fair, one of the worst decisions you can make in life is to attend church. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's confusing, but I'll let me explain it to you, okay? Attending church can be one of the best decisions that you make in life. But just attending church can also be the worst decision that you make in your life. Okay, if you guys are confused about that, we're going to explain that even further for you guys, okay? But I just need you to be aware that if you are just going to attend church, you are going to get the worst value of your time and your money spent inside four walls. I can promise that to you, for you, with you. I promise that. Okay, get it. That's the end of the sentence. But I need you to be aware of this fact that if your service of God has just been showing up to a building, that has probably been the worst decision. Even though you initially attended with a good intention, you are not getting your time's worth when you're showing up just to listen to me. My wife can attain to that fact. Okay. <laughs> Patrick, wrong place. And um, <laughs> so I want to give you some good tips, okay? So yes, yes, you can you can keep this part. Okay. Getting the most out of becoming the church involves drinking the most free coffee that you can at a church, okay? That is good value right there, okay? Because we love Jesus so much, we bribe you with caffeine, with caffeine and man, if you just actually figure out where coffee, coffee comes from, I'm not sure why we are addicted to coffee because coffee comes from some weird places, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And the weirder the place it comes from, apparently the more aroma there is, okay? But no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I can't elaborate on this, but you guys need to go Google where, where coffee actually comes from. It's, it's I don't know how <laughs> we drink it. Uh, in any case. You see, obviously I'm being silly, but it's not about drinking free coffee. Getting the most out of becoming the church involves giving the most. And this is where it should be a little bit more quiet because it's strange. And even for me as a pastor in a congregation, I can only explain to you what the Bible says. It doesn't make sense in the mind, okay? But when you function in the spirit for some reason, it just works because when when jesus came down to the earth it's this whole time this challenge between how the world functions and how the kingdom of god functions and we've said this many times over this pulpit there will always be tension between the rules and regulations of the world in comparison to the rules and regulations of the kingdom of god there's always going to be tension it's always not going to make sense but if we abide in christ and we follow, it becomes to make sense as we develop. So here's the thing. To get the most value out of your time being at church, you need to give the most. Let me explain it to you this morning. And we're going to have um, four points that I want to speak to you guys, and it should be familiar points. The first tip that I can give you when it comes to church attendance and getting the most out of your value is point number one is to connect. Okay. Yes, I thought it was going to be quiet. Like that. So just because I know it's going to be quiet, I want to make it a little bit more prominent. I want you to really get connected, okay? Really get connected. You will never get your most value out of your time spending if you just show up 
to sit down and drink as free as much free coffee that you can. But if you show up with the intention of being connected to a community, that is the most value that you can get out of your attendance. Let, let me, I've, I've shared this before, but the story is so, so relevant for this, this specific topic. I want to please excuse me if you've heard this again. I want to share this with you once more. There was a pastor from a massive church just around the corner of us. I had the privilege of some, spending some time with him. Um, long story short, they, they were, I'm talking about 2,000 people in the church. It's massive. It's, it's, it's quite big. And he says there was a young girl in grade 8 that committed suicide in their congregation. On the weekend, when they had one of their most successful youth gathering camps that they ever experienced in the church. This event was so significant in this leader's life that he stepped away from the church for the simple reason. He's battling on the inside with his heart with this question. But if that girl was only connected to the church, the story would have been different. But for some reason, the structure of the church only caused them to attend a service instead of being connected to the church, which is two completely different conversations that we have. And this, this story, I mean, it was, it was probably one of the most, um, what's the word that I'm looking for, significant, hurtful stories that I've ever heard in the church story ever. And this past, really, he walked away from a congregation with this thing in mind that that is not church. And he's not insulting the organization. He's just saying that it's about connecting to people and people connecting to each other instead of showing up in a successful um, venue and someone lost their lives because they did not feel that they were connected to someone that was able to assist them you know why she why she took her life because her marks was not good enough in school at grade eight school marks ladies and gentlemen grade eight and the pressure of school marks was so severe and this young girl felt so isolated within a church building that she came to the conclusion that it's better to run away and take my life than it is to embrace someone inside a building. And I'm not criticizing the church on any level. I'm criticizing us as an organization, as a movement, as a community to say, it's not just about attending, ladies and gentlemen. It's about being connected to what's taking place inside this building. It's about a real relationship. It's about a real connection. Because if you are going to miss that, you are going to get the worst value for your time. And this will become useless. Because without God, this is useless. Without a true and clean agenda, this is a waste of time. Let me tell you now, if God is not here, it is better to sleep in. If God is not here, it is better to have a break in. It is better. But if God shows up, there is nothing more important. If you are connected to the heartbeat of what's taking place, there's nothing more important. But if it's just a place for free coffee, Maybe the only thing that you will get out of this is the free coffee. I'm going to give you a very mind-blowing. This is going to be one of the most significant advice I've ever given to anyone ever in my life. Engage your Bible. You have to engage your Bible. It's not sufficient to wake up in the morning, take out one of those 100 promises in the Bible. That's like a Christian fortune cookie, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Without the cookie. So it's low GI. Okay, there's some health benefits. There's, there's some health benefits, okay? But we do not serve a God of magic. We do not serve a God of games. We serve a God of covenants. A God of rules and regulations, and added to the rules and regulations, I want to add um, relationship as well. 
And if you only lean into one side, you are going to get the worst value for your time than ever before. And then you guys say, oh, do I really have to read my Bible? It's not about a chore, ladies and gentlemen. It's about a heart thing. I can promise you this, and I'm making a lot of promises this morning. I'm getting a little bit scared here on top of it. Your life will change when you really begin to study the Bible. Let me, let me tell you now. Sometimes we talk about boring things in the Bible, okay? And I'm not insulting the Bible in that sense. What I mean by boring is, I mean, I mean, there's many topics that we can discuss. You've heard many sermons off of this pulpit, fine. But I want to tell you, when you see God speaking to you in the Word, it changes you in a way that you will read the Bible differently than, than you ever before. When you begin to study the Bible, you know, especially the stuff that we don't understand. That's probably the best part of the Bible. Is Usually what we do, we read something, we don't understand it, so we skip it. That's when you read the Bible. But when you engage the Bible, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there's no more interesting and more alive thing to, to put your time in is when you really actively engage with the Bible, you listen to the stories of David and Solomon and Paul and how they live their lives out to follow Christ. And then as you, as you read these stories, you can say, I, I've got a similar story there. So I, I, I've also doubted like they did, or I was also insecure like this, and it becomes a lot. But you need to engage and spend time in the Word. But if you don't do that, ladies and gentlemen, you are losing value for your time here. You are not, you are not getting the free shampoos, okay? Take the free shampoos. The second thing, and this is also important when it comes to connecting, is you need to, you can put on the next one for me, you need to join a connect group. You need to join a connect group. This is probably one of the most important things that you can do. Because it's not about you. Okay, I'm going to jump into that part in a second now. Church is a family. It's a connection. You cannot love God without loving His church. You might dislike people. But man, we do this in marriage every single day. We love each other, but you can dislike and love in the same sentence. Okay, you can dislike and love at the same time. Love does not mean that there are stuff that we don't, uh, love means that there are many times stuff that we don't like. Love means opportunity for hurt. It's just part of the story. That's just how it is. But you need to get connected. Otherwise, you're not getting value for your time here this morning, ladies and gentlemen. You need to participate. You can go to the next one for me, please. You need to participate in church events. We are not doing church events because we want to make an extra two rand on a Budavors roll. Two rand does not buy the sugar that we consume. We do not do things to be a social entertaining hub. We do things to connect the church. We do things to build unity, ladies and gentlemen. If you do not participate in church events, you are not getting the most value for your time here this morning. And don't, you don't have to believe me, speak to anyone that you feel has got a close walk with God and let them tell you, don't take my word for this, write down the notes and you do your own study with regards to this. But I can assure you that participation and being connected is one of the most important things. Why? Because there's a grade 8 girl that took her life because she was not connected at the right time, at the right place to the real church. But she only attended a gathering. And again, I want to be clear. I'm not criticizing the church or the building. I'm talking about the importance of getting connected. Now we're going to get to the fun part, and you guys are going to get a little bit more quieter. So remember, we're talking about practical stuff to build a healthy church rhythm. You need to get connected. Connected. Number two, you need to serve. You need to serve. I don't want to say need. You have to, okay? If you follow Christ, service is part of the deal. It's not me. It's the Bible saying this. So if you want to be angry, you need to talk to God, okay? But here's the thing about service. I want to just add this to you guys. If you attend a gathering of us this morning, I want you to be clear. If you look hard enough, okay, 
I can assure you, you will find an issue. Okay, I've been a bit conservative here. If you look for an issue, you will find two. Okay, the previous one said one, but I mean, if you look really hard, maybe you'll find two issues at our church, okay? But here's the thing, if we look really hard enough, we will find problems in church, okay? I can promise you this, but here's the amazing part of serving. When you serve, you become one of the issues at church, ladies and gentlemen. You can only find the issue if you are not part of the team. Because if you're part of the team, you will become the issue that the people attend will point towards. Okay. But I can assure you this. N- another promise is this morning. You, ca- you will not find issues when you are serving. Because there will be so many complaints about your serving that you have to run around the whole time just to keep attenders happy. Serving is part of getting the most value of your time when you come to church. The thing is, it's easier to blame others than to take responsibility up for ourselves. And that's why we tend to, and I'm, let, me, let me just quickly mention this, I'm not talking about feedback. I'm not talking about giving constructive criticism. I'm not talking about giving your opinion and trying to add value. Because there's no problem with that. I'm not trying to push anyone away that's giving us feedback on services at all. I mean, you need to embrace feedback. It's very, very crucial. But in any case, what I'm trying to say is people just showing up looking for issues and not doing anything. They aren't connected, ladies and gentlemen. They aren't serving. They're attending an event. But the church is not about attending an event. The church is about being connected to a family. Serving simply means this, that we are looking actively for ways to help people around us. That's the essence of our faith. Over and over again, you will see this idea of Jesus coming down and giving everything that he can, so much so that he kneels down and washes the feet of his disciples. Why did he do that? Because he's showing us the way God wants us to live in a world that's unfair. He's showing us the way what righteousness looks like even when we are persecuted. He's showing us what leadership looks like in God's kingdom. And again, you will hear this often again. There's a worldly way and there's a godly way. And we will be challenged between making these decisions over and over and over again. I mean, if there's one frustrating thing about our faith is our faith promises a better world in the future. All right. And then our faith asks us to be that better world. While when we look around us, it seems like when we are the better person, we don't get anywhere in our life. And here's the worst part. And God's going to say, exactly. Uh, But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. Because this is my kingdom. And this is what I showed you through my son. This is how God's kingdom functions. And when the world stands up and do things their way and win. We are still required to do it God's way. When Jesus was crucified, he was still required to do it a certain way. And here's the amazing part of this whole story. Jesus wanted to live longer. Okay, you guys are quiet about that part. I've said this a couple of times. When Jesus prayed, he didn't want this idea of being crucified. There's so many times where it's, it's not that we aren't allowed to be concerned about life. It's just saying we can be concerned about life, but we need to choose God in any case. That's the message over and over and over again. And Jesus comes and he submits his desires unto God and says, I want this cup to pass me by. I want to skip this. I want to kind of just bypass this and do it the easy way. But Jesus knows that he can't do things the world's way or even the way that he feels. But he's called to do it God's way. Here's the thing that I want you to to pick up. It's not about going to church, but it's about being the church. And when you become the church, service is part of it. Service is part of it. You do not belong to yourself. You can't pray for yourself. 
You can't look for your comfort only. You need to open your heart to see how you can pray for others. You need to open your heart to see how you can serve others. You need to open your heart, and this is probably the suckiest one of them all. You need to sacrifice for others that don't understand your sacrifice, but just take what they can take. And it costs a price. And it costs comfort. But if you do not serve, you're getting the worst value for your time at church. Because the point is, you're not being the church. You are attending a church. But it's about being the church. Last two points, this, oh no, last two points of this section. <laughs> Number three, you guys know this by now already. If you've been in our church for a while, you will know. Connect, serve, invite. We need to, you can go to the next one. We need to involve others. We need to get them to follow the vision. Why? Because we want a big church. No, because that's the job of the church. It's, it's in our Bible. Well, we can choose to ignore that, but if you want to become the church, invitation is part of the job description. If you just want to attend this building, fine, but you're getting the worst value for your time, and when we want to become the church, invitation is going to be part of that. That means that we want to share what's on the inside of our hearts with those around us because we want them to follow this vision that God um, displayed through His Son. But that's only if you are the church. If you only want to attend, none of these points are relevant to you. But you're getting the worst value for your time. Number four, and now, <laughs> are you guys ready for this one? <laughs> Money, money. Okay, any case. Connect, serve, invite, and give. I want you to understand something very, very important now. Maintaining a place of worship. You can put on the next one for me, please. Is a form of worship. Our God that we serve is not limited to a building. But as a community, when we present Him with our house, where we gather that represents Him, like the tabernacle did, like the temple did, that is a form of worship. That doesn't mean that God cannot show up under a tree. But I want you to, to pick up something in the story, in this narrative of the Bible over and over again. There's something special when a community dedicates something to God. There's something tangible, there's something special, there's a blessing that rests upon that. So I want you to be aware of this, that when we are living, we are living in a time when as things are progressing, as the churches are large, it's not small um, home groups anymore. Having this, this desire to have a place of worship that is excellent, having a place of worship that puts God first, that is part of our worship, ladies and gentlemen. Financial contribution to an organization, I don't want to use the word organization, to a faith community where you belong is getting the most out of your attendance here this morning, out of your joining here this morning. And no, this is not a cheap, easy, fancy way in order to get people to give more money. You guys decide in your heart what you need to give. That's between you and God. That's got nothing to do with me. But I want you to be aware that we need to have a place where we are proud of gathering. A place that is known as a place of here we seek God's face. Here we gather to open the word and read the Bible. It's a sanctified place. It's a dedicated place. It's a holy place. And when I say holy, I'm not speaking about when you walk, you float when you go around in the place. I'm not talking about that type of holy, okay? These TV shows for that. When I say holy, I'm talking about in our lives. We go to work. We build our homes. We do a pension, we get medical aid, but part of our structure, we honor God and have a place where we meet Him and mean it seriously with Him. So these bricks are normal bricks that any other place can use. But what this building represents is holiness, is sanctification. It's a meeting place with God. But today it's here. Tomorrow it's at your home. And next week, it's in the park when we're going to play some soccer. It's, it's not limited to a place. It's not limited to place. But I want you to be aware that having a special place is our way 
of giving something to God to say, this is what we want to give you as an offering. This is a place that we want to dedicate and sanctify and make holy for you, a place where we can spend time with you. Now, last five minutes. I want to quickly talk and conclude this conversation. Practical steps. Connect, serve, invite, and give. If you want to get the most value out of a church, you need to give the most. Otherwise, you're going to miss a massive journey that God has in store for you. And don't take my word for this. Read your Bible and pick up on what Paul did. Pick up on what Peter did and how they were giving in their following of Christ. Let me carry on with my next part. Maybe as you've been going through the series, maybe I want to just quickly talk about this, this concept of backsliding maybe pops up. Well, maybe, maybe backsliding is a little bit of a, of a harsh word. Let me, let me use another word that's linked to this. Maybe, maybe you feel, feel like you stagnated in your walk with God. I want you to take to heart what I've been sharing over this last couple of five weeks to you. I want you to really take heart. And you might have good excuses why you've stagnated in your walk. Maybe you got, maybe you got hurt. okay? And maybe there's some real grief as well in your life. But I want to talk to you guys straight for one second, okay? And I want to, this might not be relevant for everyone, okay? But, but out of my experience, this is going to be the truth in general, okay? The, not for everyone in general. It's not hurt. It's not grief that's causing us to stagnate. It's a worldly influence that's causing us to stagnate, ladies and gentlemen. If you are at that place where you have been experiencing an unhealthy church rhythm in your life, but you can still feel God is speaking to you and He's touching your heart and He's showing up in your life and He's inviting you to, to engage with Him, I want to give you three simple points this morning to begin to build a healthy first step. Obviously, connect, serve, invite, and give. But before we get to those ones and you, you take those steps further, we're going to start this morning with three simple steps. I want you to remember, I want you to repent, and I want you to repeat. What I mean by remember is, I want you to remember how good God has been in your life. You can stagnate, but you know God showed up in your life. Remember that time you prayed and the time that, that, that miracle happened in your life that you, you just know God did something. You know, he pulled some strings for you, okay? You got some people in high places, okay? You, you know that fine that you got and it just got lost in the mail? You got some people in high places, okay? Okay, maybe not a fine, okay? But yeah, you know, that, it happens, it happens, okay? But I want you to remember the times God was good in your life. And then I want you to take the st second step and I want you to have a repenting heart before Him. Apologize. Say you sorry before God. Not, not before a church, ladies and gentlemen. On the inside of you, God. As you remember how God showed up, don't just leave the thought there. But kneel your heart down before Him and ask Him for forgiveness. And that's the amazing thing of God. That even when you were stagnated in your life, He still showed up in any case. But now, as we remember how He showed up, our response to him is as we're getting connected, we are going to repent. And here's the thing. If you've been in church for a long time, you need to repeat this process over and over again. This is not a once-off occasion in your life. There are ups. There are downs. There are times when you are full of faith. There are times when you have doubt. There are times when God shows up. And there are times when God is so quiet, you wonder what took place. But stay committed to remembering the good things. Asking God, repenting before Him. And then every now and then find yourself repeating this process. I want to conclude this, this series with my last 50 seconds with this last statement. And we open up with this verse. Seek first a healthy church rhythm in your life. And all the other things, all the other things, the stuff that we are anxious about, the stuff that we are concerned about, all those things will be added. All those things will fall into place. All those things will fix itself out. And even when they do not get fixed, we still seek the kingdom of God first. 
So this morning, as we're going to conclude this series, we've had a massive five-week conversation about this. I really want you to take heart the information that, I've, that, that we've been sharing from this pulpit. And really, it's, it's, it's not just about getting a big church. It's about building a healthy church. It's not just about having a lot of, a lot of feet in this building. But it's about having many healthy hearts before the throne room of God. And as we're going to conclude, I want to encourage you. God, if God has been speaking to you, respond to his call. Take up those healthy habits. Fix those things that need to be fixed. Ask for it, repentance before God. God is good. God is gracious to be ready. He's been waiting for you the whole time in any case. Just make those healthy decisions in your life. So that God can meet with his kids. And so that you can get the most value out of your time spent at church. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word and power and authority and your spirit speaking into our lives, Father. Father, thank you for showing up in my life. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for being faithful, Father, as a community. We want to submit our hearts before you and we want to say thank you for all the beautiful things that you have done, Father. We, we are remembering your faithfulness, Father. We are reminding ourselves that, man, even though we've got battles, you are still good in our lives, Father. We want to repent before you and say sorry. We ask and beg for forgiveness for the times that we walked away, Father. We know that you were good, Father, but our attention was off. Our focus was off. We deliberately chose different things other than you. But this morning, we recommit our hearts before you, Father. And we pray that your Spirit would remind us consistently to repeat this process of remembering your faithfulness and repenting for the times when we walked away from you. Thank you for being faithful. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone says, Amen. Thank you.